of the Lord, say amen. amen. If you're glad the preacher made it to the house of the Lord, say amen. amen. I tell you what, when my wife ain't around, I fall all to pieces. I tell you the truth, I got in my office and I got to studying and, and a chewing and a working and that thing gets so good in the office sometimes when the Lord just to give you a little bit and feeding you and I kept looking at the clock and looking at the clock, I thought I had another hour left and, until I got a good call at like time to be here and uh, anyway it's good to be in the house of the Lord and I'm glad you're here tonight it's good to have the Bundys back with us and enjoyed that message I'm still chewing on that message you gave this morning and uh, I'm just happy that they're still God's still raising up good solid men of God to preach the word of God preaching out the right book preaching the right way with the Holy Spirit of God and uh, I think our future is a little safer with these young ones right here and we cannot forget Jennifer there uh, you never uh, overlooked either, but um, thank you all for being here tonight. If you will, take your copy of God's Word, turn with us to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis in chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, we'll look at verses 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he, and he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him therefore a burnt offering upon the, uh, one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took uh, two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Verse 4, Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his, son, his young men, Abide ye here with the, with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder, and worship, and come again unto you. I want you to notice that, and come again unto you, the attitude of faith that Abraham was proclaiming. Verse 6, And Abraham took the, word, the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both them, of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, and my son. 
And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together, verse 9, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid a wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither uh, do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in uh, the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Let us pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your house. God, I stand here a weak vessel, Lord, with a fragile body and a fragile mind, Lord. But God, may you in some way, uh, God, as you did... uh, In past times, Lord, take a weak man and do something through him, dear God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I yield myself to you and I pray against any, uh, God, unclean spirit in this place. God, anything that would hinder, Lord, the Holy Spirit's working, I pray that you'd remove it tonight and I pray, God, that you would draw us closer unto you. And if there be one that's lost and undone, Lord, that this night you would draw them, Lord, by thy spirit and through thy word, Lord, unto salvation. It's in Jesus Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. As we look today, or tonight, I might say, uh, if I were to entitle the message, it would be, uh, of course, Abraham and Isaac. We're looking, uh, as we're going through a series of seeing Christ in the Old Testament. And tonight would be part four of that series of seeing Christ in the Old Testament. And tonight would be about Abraham and about Isaac, the picture that we see of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know that you can't be saved or no man can be saved unless they see Christ and who He really is? They need to see themselves a sinner and they need to understand that they need a Savior. But until you really recognize and understand who Jesus Christ is and what Christ did for you, you can't be saved. We've got to see Christ. And there are many people today who are preaching messages, many people who are in religious movements, but they have not seen Jesus Christ. We think back to the New Testament when it was in its beginning, in its early stages, and what would the uh, apostles have preached the message of the cross from? They were preaching it from the Old Testament. And they were preaching Christ because Christ is running all through the Old Testament. In our first uh, part of this series, we saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 through 4, where it talks about uh, the rock, Christ Jesus. And it said that that rock, Christ that followed you, that was Christ. Christ in the Old Testament, friend, as the old timer said again, and as you've heard me repeat so many times, that scarlet thread of redemption runs from genera- uh, Genesis all the way to Revelation. Revelation. Tonight, uh, we look and see uh, a picture of uh, Abraham and Isaac who go up on a mountain. I think to just roughly a, a, a month or a little better ago, we decided to take off to the Amish country and to the Noah's Ark. And we decided to take the camper with us. And of course, I got an old 2004 Chevy, but it is a Chevy. Like a rock, it's like Jesus. Say amen right there. It's a good foundation to be in. But I took that old 2004 Chevy, and it's a gas to start with, and it's got a, I didn't tell many, but it's got a, 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 a exhaust gasket on the side, a manifold gasket that needs to be replaced, so it's got a little bit of, little bit of air ticking in it, so it's losing a little bit of power, but it didn't bother her not to know that. But anyway, here we are in that old truck, and we decided to go straight through the Smoky Mountains. Didn't want to go down to Atlanta and then have to go around the mountains, which would have been flat ground. But I'm going to take that heavy Chevy all the way through the Smoky Mountains. And we'd start out downhill about 65, 70 mile an hour. And then as we began to creep up, it would get hard and it would slow down. By the time we'd get up to the top of that mountain, she was begging at about 40 to 38 uh, miles per hour. 
And uh, nonetheless, I thought it was a hard trip and a hard travel. And it was. It was enduring and kind of worrying about the truck and if it was going to hold up. And then after a few hours of it, I was beginning to get weary and get tired. But when I compare that to the mountain that we see here that Isaac and especially Abraham were climbing up, it was a higher mountain and it was a tougher travel than what I ever thought about going through in those smoky mountains. As we look tonight, we uh, want to capture this main idea and that is that Jesus yielded to God the Father's will. Jesus yielded to God the Father's will as He died as a sacrifice. What we see in the context is that we would remember that uh, God had promised Abraham a faithful man of God who had stepped out in faith and left everything that he knew of in life, family and all, and he followed God. And as he followed God, he made some mistakes and he was growing in his, could I safely say, Old Testament sanctification. God was growing and God was maturing him and God promised him a son. And finally that special son came when he was roughly 100 years old and his wife Sarah was roughly 90 years old. All of y'all women said, hallelujah, that's a miracle right there, right? And nonetheless, this child came and here, all of a sudden, he's grown and he's up in age now. He's a grown man, but he's not married. Uh, there are di differences of opinions on how old he was, but he was pretty much a, a grown man, uh, uh, probably young in his 20s to 30. And uh, here, all of a sudden, God calls on Abraham and he says, take your son Isaac, the promised son, the only one that's going to make you a great generation for future generations, and you take him and you sacrifice him. You kill him on the mountain that uh, I will tell you to go to. And what we see is in this picture here in Genesis 22 is uh, an older Abraham. He's not the younger Abraham that we have seen previously in Scripture. Uh, he was an older, more mature man in the faith. He wasn't the younger Abraham who was lying to kings to escape uh, getting in trouble or maybe even dying. He wasn't the uh, Abraham that we saw in the past that even tried in his own way to produce a child, uh, actually the promised child in the flesh with a servant girl named Hagar. Uh, that was a younger Abraham who was less mature and although he was believing God, he wasn't completely built up in the faith. But here in this passage we see a mature Abraham and one who had grown in the faith and one who had tasted of the Lord and had found Him true. He began to believe God even in the hardest areas of life and in the strangest things that God would tell him to do. Can I tell you that when you really sell out and single yourself out for God, God's going to begin to put you in some strange tasks. And you'll think the world will call me crazy. And that's just the test that God is putting Abraham through here. The main idea of this passage is to reveal what faith really looks like. And if we were to try to grab the, the main context and we could preach and we could talk about Abraham's faith and compare it to how we should have faith. But today and in the series that we are, we want to focus more on the picture of Christ that is in the passage here that we're looking at when we think about Abraham and we think about Isaac. Not only is there a picture of Christ who is, a, is, is illustrated through Isaac, but there's also God the Father who is illustrated uh, through here through Abraham and in His faithfulness to sacrifice His Son. And tonight as we look at that with that thought of trying to picture who Christ is in the Old Testament and to see Him in this passage, first of all, we would see that, uh, that Isaac was a son who was special. Isaac was a son who was special. Look at verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. It doesn't mean that He tempted him to sin because we understand that God tempts no man unto sin if we were to read the book of James. But what it, that word tempt really means is testing. But I want to tell you, I think we're safe even with the word tempt because God was tempting him to do good, not to do evil. But it was a test, not a temp to evil temptation that God was putting before him. And he said, Abraham, verse 1, unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. 
Notice that Abraham is listening for the voice of God. He is heeding to the voice of God. And there are many people that would miss the direction that God's giving them because they are not spiritually in connection with God to even hear what God's trying to tell them. He hears God. And in verse 2 he said, Take now thy son, thine grab only son Isaac. Oh, he's a special son. Thine only son Isaac, uh, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. His only son. This was a son that was important because this son was a son that was the only future generation uh, that Abraham would have. He would carry on the lineage. And if he kills him, and Abraham by now is well over a hundred years old, he's on the verge of death and the verge of passing away. God's given a miracle of this son and he's raised him up to a grown man. How, if something happens to Isaac, how is he going to produce another son? son miraculously like this. What we see, he was a special son. We could see over in Genesis 17, verse uh, 1 through 2, Genesis 17, we'll see how special he was. In Genesis 17, verse 1, And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Verse 2 of chapter 17, And I will make my covenant between me and and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly, verse 6 says, and I will make thee an exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out to thee. Isaac is the hinge of all of this promise. God has promised Abraham, and he has prophesied of Isaac. He was a special son that was prophesied of. Can I tell you that when I think about Jesus Christ, He was a special Son to God the Father. He was the only begotten Son, the Scriptures tell us, of God the Father. And what we see is that Jesus was a child that also was prophesied of in the Scriptures. What does Isaiah 7 and 14 and 9 and 6 tell us? It tells us that you shall a virgin shall conceive and birth forth a son and you shall call His name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Uh, what did the angels uh, tell Joseph in the Gospels? He said, you're going to have a child. Take Mary and take this child for this child is a special child of the Holy Spirit. And you shall call His name Jesus. Do we see the picture here that this is a only child of Abraham and he is a special son he was prophesied of Genesis chapter 18 verse 1 and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre and sat in the tent door in the heat of the day then in verse 10 the angel of the Lord comes to him and these men come to him and in verse 10, the message is given by God. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it at the tent door, uh, which was behind him. And I better grab this. You see in verse 11 that she laughed at the prophecy of God. Why? Because it was humanly impossible. But with God, all things are possible. This was a special son that was given to Sarah, and to Abraham. In Genesis chapter 21, we see just how prophetic this child was, that Genesis 21 verse 1, And the Lord visited Sarah as He had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as He had spoken, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the grab this, set time of which God had spoken to him. This child was a special child. He had a set time. He was prophesied of. And our Lord was a set child, wasn't He? Given at a set time. And uh, our uh, picture here is showing us of a special son, an only son. And we understand that Jesus was the only begotten of His Father who would willingly lay Him down on the cross at Calvary. What we see here, we see that He was a special Son, But not only was he a special son, but I want you to see tonight that secondly, he was a son 
who was sacrificed. Not only was he a son who was special, but he was a son who was sacrificed. In verse 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, chapter 22, verse 3, and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and claved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, boy, that third day is very important, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Here Abraham, the man of faith, is seeing Mount Moriah. He's seeing the place that he was supposed to go to on the third day. It says there in uh, in verse uh, 14, And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. No doubt Abraham was seeing the revelation of God and no doubt he was believing towards a resurrection. He knew that somehow his son, if his son were to be slain by God for, uh, for a sacrifice, he was believing that God somehow would redeem that son, would either resurrect him back to life or would give forth a, a different sacrifice. He was believing by faith in the Lord, and there we see that picture that he was seeing. And in the mountain, it was the mountain Moriah was called, the place where it would be seen. And can I tell you, it would be seen. Mount Moriah, if you were to study and, and study by some uh, good people who know all about uh, geology and all of this stuff, you would understand that Mount Moriah is actually there in Jerusalem and it's the place where the temple uh, of, of Solomon was placed and where the sacrifice many years later would, would take place for the children of Israel. And, and now it's uh, still, uh, still there. The temple no longer exists, but it's, it, it's a, a plain up there within Jerusalem and it's an important place and it's a place that was set aside by God for the sacrifice. We look and we see that he was a son uh, who was sacrificed. And we go on in verse uh, 5 and it says, And he said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and we will come again. No doubt he had revelation of God, but he also had faith in God that God's word was going to hold true. He knew that this was the promised son. He knew that this was a special son. He knew that God's promise would hold true. And therefore, through the eyes of faith and what vision that God had given him and revelation that God had given him, he knew that there would be a provided sacrifice some way, somehow. Verse 6, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. What did he do? He took Isaac and he laid upon him the wood for the fire. Can I tell you that Jesus Christ took upon himself, he took upon the the, the sins of the world that would be sacrificed upon him. Here this little, uh, this uh, grown man Isaac, he's gathering the wood that he was supposed to be burnt on, that he would be sacrificed upon. Can I tell you that if we read the Gospels correctly, Jesus Christ toted his cross and bore it all the way up a hill, a hill that many say would be on the same cliff of Mount Moriah. But we look and see that here, uh, Jesus was coming up and he was toting the cross as Isaac here is a only begotten son as well, and or not a begotten, but only son, and he's going forth obediently and to uh, the sacrifice that God has ordered. And we see in verse 7, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood... But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? No doubt this has got to be a hard time for uh, Abraham to be taking his only son, his special son, knowing what the son doesn't yet know. Knowing that he's going to have to kill his only son, to kill this special son. No doubt the, the trouble in his heart, the bewilderment of his heart, even knowing In faith, God is going to provide, but at the same time, leaning on faith and not on knowledge. Not really knowing how God's going to do this. Not knowing how God's going to do this special event. But here uh, he goes in faith. And I want to tell you what the struggle must have been for our Heavenly Father when He was sending His Son 
to the cross. The, the, the torment of God the Father, even to be separated from Jesus those years when Jesus was here on earth. A holy trinity, a holy uni unity that had always existed before the eons of time ever started. They were together and they were one and they were in relation. And here we see that they're separated, first of all, uh, by by. Jesus' earthly inhabitation and then to send His Son up on a hill, to walk Him up a hill. Can I tell you, God the Father was right there with Jesus all the way up that hill. Not only that, uh, but as we see there in verse 5 that what happened uh, that um, Abraham tells the young men, he says, y'all can't go past this point for what's going to go on up here is a holy thing. It's a spiritual thing. Y'all can't entertain the worship that we're fixing to go do right here. This is a holy thing. Frank, can I just tell you, I don't think we get a good grasp but I think we see somewhat of a picture of it here, what the Father was seeing during the resurrection of Christ. Friend, I want you to understand, we see it through the Messianic Sam, Psalms. Psalms 22 and, and Isaiah and other Psalms, we can look and see the what we call the Messianic Psalms where we see Christ and He calls out, oh My God, my God, why hast Thou forsaken me? In Psalms 22 and 1. And we can see His picture, but here in Genesis 22, we begin to see what was on the father's heart. The father was troubled because he was sending forth his son knowing exactly what his son was going to. And here Isaac is and he's asking, but where will the sac sacrifice come from? He says in verse 7, or excuse me, verse 8, but Abraham said, my son, my God, will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. Uh, so they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Not only do we see a special son and not only do we see a, a son that was sacrificed, but now we see a son who was surrendered. He was surrendered to the Father's will. Again, uh, Isaac was a grown man now. We could look back a couple of chapters and see that he was a perfect son. He was a good son. There was no flaws in him. God had blessed Isaac. Now he was a scrapping, uh, sturdy young man and here he is walking up probably helping his daddy up the hill because Abraham is so much in age now, well over a hundred years old. And here we see that Isaac, the only son, allows his father to bind him, to rope him up, and to lay him on an altar. I don't know about y'all, but I can tell you, I think I could take my daddy if I had to. Now, I want to be a good son, but I think I could take him out if he's fixing to put a knife through me and lay me up on a fire. Because I'm just going to tell you just like you would say, I love me some me when it comes down to breathing and keeping life. But here, Isaac humbles himself to his father's will and allows himself to be bound and placed on an altar of sacrifice. Is that not a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ who came to this old world, who thought it not robbery to give up his reputation to come to this old lowly sewage uh, streets here in this old world and to leave all of his glories in heaven and to come here and to be beat and to be whipped and to give himself of an offering for all of mankind? He was a son who was surrendered as Jesus was surrendered to the Father's will. I remember over in the Gospels that night before Jesus was taken and what happened? He goes into the, 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 uh, uh, the, the garden, uh, to the garden of, uh, and He goes in and He goes into a special place and He begins to lean on a rock and He begins to pray intently till drops of blood were rushing down His head. And what did He say? Oh Father, if there be any other way. But what did He say? Father, not my will, but Thy will be done. As hard as Calvary was and as dark as Calvary was for the Son of God. Friend, I want you to understand that it was a dark time for the Father as well. As, G as God would turn his back the father on the son and we'd see complete darkness for uh, a time there on that day and uh, God the father was struggling as much as God the son here we see a special son a, 
a son who was sacrificed, and we see a son who was surrendered. He was surrendered to his father's will. Verse 10, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Abraham had faith right on up to the end, didn't he? How much closer can you get? I believe Abraham was all the way up, and I think he was probably fixing to come down, still knowing that God was going to provide a lamb. God was going to do something here because God is a sure God. Can I tell you, it doesn't matter how bad your situation is. It doesn't, look, it doesn't matter if it's the last day or the last seconds before some government agency says it's almost the end of something. But can I tell you that you be faithful to God forever and believe in the impossible can happen through Him down to the very last seconds because many times God does His greatest work at the latest times in your trials and in your troubles. And here in verse 11, And the angel of the Lord called unto him, Now we begin to see in verse 11, we see not only a son that was special and a son that was sacrificed and a son that was surrendered, but we see a son that was saved. We see a son that was saved. In verse 11, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. I want you to notice the answer, Here am I. It's the same answer that he gave in verse 1 when God gave his first command in chapter 22 verse 1. What does he say? Behold, here am I. A man in an attitude of faith is one that is always listening to the voice of God. Even in the hardest of times, even in the greatest struggles, even in the greatest times where your stomach is tore up and you're all upset because something's going on that you don't want to happen. Here this father was and he was all distraught, no doubt. Isaac the son, no doubt, is distraught as Jesus was on that night in Gethsemane there. And no doubt they were both believing by faith in yielding to God's will even in the hardest and strangest of situations. And here, verse 12, And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the Lord, upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. This young son was saved. He was saved by the Lord. And this is where the difference comes and we lose the picture of Isaac being uh, as Christ. Because Christ did not get saved from His sacrifice, did He? Christ, God the Father didn't say, okay, that's enough when they were about to whip Him for the last time. God the Father didn't say, that's enough when, uh, when they were piercing the last nail through His feet. And God the Father didn't say, okay, let's stop it here and we'll bring supernatural healing power, heal all of His body and He won't have to die and stay here. But God the Father, uh, in the absence of this sacrifice, God the Father would give a promise to save this son, but not only to save this son Isaac, but to save you and me, sons and daughters of the future generations. But I want you to understand here, uh, in verse 12, it says, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. You see, the test has come through now. The word tempt there in in verse uh, 1 and verse 2 has been the test. uh, And now he has passed the test. And friend, can I tell you, God's going to give you some hard tests in your life and in your walk, especially when you begin to fully surrender to God. No doubt these missionaries here tonight can already attest to the test that you've had. But I'm afraid that I'm glad we can't see the future and know the test unto sacrifice that God will put us through, but there'll be many more to come, and there'll be many hard ones to face. But God always provides for His own. Friend, you be faithful, and you continue in your faithfulness, and never let circumstances discourage your faith that God will come through in your time of trouble. We're looking here and we see that he was saved. And what happens in verse 13? And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Boy, isn't God good? He's given provision here. 
the angel of the Lord, and it wasn't just an angel, but it was God speaking, and God speaks forth, and He says, Hold it, son. You don't kill your son, I'll kill mine. Uh, you save your son, I'll destroy mine. You keep your son, and I'll let mine go. Friend, I want you to understand that the Father gave much when He gave us Jesus Christ, His only Son. I want you to understand here that Isaac was pivotal. Isaac was important. Why? Because if Isaac had have died on that there altar and sacrificed, if God would have about got snoozy like I did just a few minutes ago, and I was right on late. But what if it was so important a time as Isaac on the altar, if God had been either snoozing or overlooking the time clock or studying a little too long. Friend, I want you to understand God doesn't snooze. and God was right on time. And He stopped Abraham from killing Isaac. Verse 14, And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. It shall be seen. There was a lamb provided... God said, I'll provide a lamb. And he looked back and he sees a, a ram over there hung up in the thorns, hung up in the thickets. Now we could probably try to bring some pictures into that, but we don't want to go too far uh, into digging too deep trying to make some pictures. We'll stay with that, which is clear. But here God provides a ram and, and He says, I'll provide a sacrifice. Now He was providing a sacrifice for that day. But at the same time, that ram was not going to be the sacrifice. He was providing a temporary day-to-day -day need. But when he was speaking of, I will provide a sacrifice, he was proclaiming what John the Baptist proclaimed when John came uh, there in the gospel. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Friend, can I help you to understand that God was given a temporary sacrifice by a ram at that moment, but he had already uh, decided and put in fashion and form that Jesus would be the ultimate sacrifice for mankind. And we could look to uh, Revelations chapter 13 verse 8 and it it says that Jesus was slain before the foundations of the world, before the need on Mount Moriah, before the uh, Jesus God's plan uh, to send up and test Abraham. God had already decided He was going to slay Jesus on the cross for man's sins. In fact, it goes all the way back to Genesis 3.15 where, where he prophesied that the Christ child would come and be the in enemy of the devil and give him the mortal blow upon the head. But even before Genesis 3.15 in the, uh, in the uh, ugus of time before God ever decided to create this world, when God sat up in the middle of nowhere and in the corner of uh, a non-universe, He tapped on His spiritual desk and scratched His temple and had a thought of creating mankind and the world. God had already in His mind said, I'll send My Son, My only begotten Son. And I'll sacrifice him because man's sacrifice can never substitute redemption from God. Friend, I want you to understand tonight that if Isaac had died, it would not have satisfied any dead in life. Because it's not by works lest any man should boast, but it is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who was laid on an altar, we could say a cross. And his father didn't pull back the knife, but he ran him through and he allowed him to die for your and my sins. And tonight, if you've never been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, friend, I want you to understand, God the Father and God the Son gave a whole lot that you could be saved from your sins. And the only thing that hinders you from receiving Christ and the work that He's done is your own stubbornness, your own strong will, your love for the world, because He said that any man that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Romans 10, 13. And friend, tonight, if you would humble yourself and hear the gospel message, God is screaming out through this message of Abraham and Isaac that those who would believe God by faith and in His works and in the Lamb that would soon come you can be saved from your death. Isaac was worthy of death. He had sinned. 
Abraham was not worthy of a good son. They deserved to die. And they needed to die because they had sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God stepped in in their place. And when Christ stepped up on the cross and died, He died for our sins. But you know what? He went all the way back to an altar up on Mount Moriah where smoke had cleared now and the wood had deteriorated and rotted into the ground and there's uh, could be no evidence of that day of sacrifice. But when he was dying on that cross, his mind was going all the way back to Isaac. That day when he was about to be slain. And he substituted for Isaac. And friend, he substituted for you and me. And if you will by faith trust Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, he'll save you. Every head bowed, every eye closed as we come to a time of altar call. Maybe you're here and you've never been saved. And you say, well, I, I just don't, I don't know if God would save me. I've been too far. I've done too much. Frank, can I just tell you that God's love goes beyond deeds and works and acts. But God loved you before you were ever born. God actually acknowledged and made it possible for you to enter in this world. He knew you. He knows you now. He knows everything you've done. And even though He knows the worst things you've ever done, He loves you. And He loved you so much that He sent Jesus. And He allowed His Son to die on the cross that you might go free. Isaac got off of that altar. And him and his father, they left down and they got back to the boys down there on the bottom of the hill. And they had smiles and they were giggling, no doubt. No doubt they had to be giving old Baptist shout a little bit going down the, down the mountainside. And no doubt the slave boys were looking and uh, trying to figure out well, what's wrong with these two. They just went to worship. What's going on here? Frank, can I just tell you that you can have joy in your soul when you receive the forgiveness of God and God provides for you. Maybe you're here tonight and maybe you're just down in the faith and uh, maybe you're worn out. Maybe you're being tested by God. and Maybe you're worn out with it. You're down to the last seconds. You think God's not going to provide anymore. Maybe, maybe God's just going to leave me here and let me sulk for forever. Can I tell you that God is a God that works even in the last milliseconds when it's for good to those that love Him, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Don't give up on God. Have faith. Have an attitude of faith. And be there and be ready. Have your spiritual ears on so when God says, uh, Kyle, Kyle, or, or John, John, you be right with God and ready to stop exactly where you at. Because God can move even in the milliseconds that's left in your trouble. You don't want to miss the help of God. He's there. You be obedient to God tonight. Maybe you want to come down to this altar tonight and pray. Maybe you just want to pray for some loved ones tonight. You be obedient as God leads. Father, we thank you for your message. We thank you for your word. Thank you. God, that you didn't slay Isaac. God, thank you you didn't slay Isaac. You didn't slay him because you were going to bring Jesus through his lineage. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you that there's hope even in the worst of situations in this life, in the worst of circumstances. God, that you're always present, ever present, and ready to hear us and to help us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.